Hello everyone, welcome back to AS Biology with Dr. Demi. I am Dr. Demi and in this video I will continue Chapter 1 of the AS Biology syllabus focusing specifically on measuring cells. If you have just found this channel, this is the second video. I am posting the AS Biology in chronological order so that students are able to revise for the exams or simply reinforce their understanding of what they already know. So if you want to watch this video just to catch up on your content or to refresh your memory on some of the things that you have learned before, this is a great resource for you. I am going to post the entire AS Biology syllabus so you will be able to find every single thing named in chronological order such as chapter 1.1, 1.2 so that you are able to follow with ease. In today's video, like I said earlier, we will be discussing how to measure cells. So at the end of the last video, I gave an activity for you to do just to practice and to exercise your unit conversion muscles. We spoke about how you can go from meters to millimeters, from millimeters to micrometers and to nanometers. And you can also go from meters to micrometers by multiplying by 10 to the power of six. If you're going from meters to millimeters, you simply multiply by 10 to the power of three. So I just say the best thing to do is to always remember that you are going three zeros higher as you move from meters to millimeters to micrometers and to nanometers. Also note that in most of your biology questions, you will find that the units are often given in micrometers. Sometimes you might have in your question that the units are given in millimeters, but the answer is in micrometers. So it is always important to pay attention to that so that you don't lose marks for something that is so small. In this video, I'm going to show you how to measure cells using the microscope. Well, I'm going to show you that from a distance because you can't do that on video or on YouTube rather. But I'm going to explain to you how it works. I'm also going to tell you how to calculate magnification from a photograph, um, how to calculate the magnification from a scale bar, and how to calculate the real size of an object from its magnification. All of these are out points, or should I say the objectives of your age. AS biology syllabus. So try as much as possible to pay attention. And when you get an opportunity to go to school and have a look at this, try to get your teacher to reinforce your understanding for you as well. So when you look through a microscope, well, these are just instructions that I often tell students. When you look through a microscope and you look through the eyepiece, which we described in the last video, you will often see that there is a bar that looks exactly like that. Now, this bar has something that goes from zero to 100. And often students miss this because obviously, if you're looking down the microscope and not looking for it, it's very hard to think that it's not there. So many of my students having looked at the microscope twice or looked into a microscope twice when I tell them look into the microscope again there's a ruler there some of them get really shocked like what there's a ruler indeed there is a ruler inside your microscope this ruler is called the eyepiece gratical so we call it the eyepiece that's the eyepiece over there and it's called the eyepiece gratical this ruler does not have any unit and this is why um it is not an accurate measurement of your cell. So if you look at this ruler, you might find that whatever specimen you're observing maybe covers from here to there. So let's assume it's a plant cell. And you can see that it covers the units between 20 to 45. Um, so if you count, these are 10 units. These are another 10 units. Those are five units. So you can say that this is 25 units. But the question is 25 units of what? This ruler doesn't have any units per se. It doesn't have have meters or millimeters or micrometers. This is why we discuss measuring cells using a microscope. Now, there is something called a stage scale that you will often be given when you go into the lab. The stage scale is a different slide of its own. So usually what you're supposed to do when you're observing the, your specimen under the microscope is to take note of how many units of your eyepiece graticle the specimen covers. So you would write that down. So let's say like we had in our, um, in our image just now that I drew, we had 25 units 
units that were covered on the eyepiece graticle. So then you remove the specimen and you put another slide that has a scale. This will be provided to you by whoever is um, governing the exam. So you look at the stage graticle. The stage scale, or ra the, rather the stage scale, not the graticle, the stage scale is often in millimeters. So you might find that they would say certain number of units is equal to 0 0.1 millimeters. What you can then do is you can try to align your stage scale on top of your eyepiece graticle so that you can count how many units of the eyepiece graticle. So I'm just going to try to draw a little bit here. Let's assume that this is our eyepiece graticle. This is not an accurate drawing, by the way. Uh, my drawing is a little bit abysmal, but I hope that you would be able to understand. So let's say this is our IP scale, the one that has no units. Okay, we have this. And then we are given a stage scale. And the stage scale maybe goes from here to there. And this is 0 0.1 millimeters. And it goes further. And that's another 0 0.1 millimeters. What you then need to do here is to say how many units of the eyepiece graticle is equivalent to the stage scale. So here, if we count, I think this is about 10 units. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Well, that's not too bad then. So 11 units of our eyepiece graticle is equal to 0 0.1 millimeters. From here we can then calculate how many would be or how big would be 25 units which is what the drawing we had that I made on the previous slide um, be in terms of its mass or in terms of its length. So 25 units then you can simply do it the easy way. I often tell students to use this method if they feel they'll be confused um, which is to say if 11 units is equal to 0 0.1 millimeters, 1 unit is 0 0.1 divided by 11 and 25 units would then be 0 0.1 times 25 divided by 11. And whatever the value of that is would be the value of the length of the um, cell that I drew in millimeters. And if we require, we can then convert it to micrometers. I hope that made sense. But if it didn't, by all means, post a question in the comments and I will explain it again if I have to. All right, so let's try this. If the eyepiece graticle is um, 100 units and we have a stage scale that's 0 0.25 millimeters in length, um, and that stage scale basically covers the whole of the eyepiece graticle, then what is the value of one unit of the eyepiece graticle? So that would then be 0 0.25 millimeters divided by 100 units. So one unit would be this much. So it means if we had a cell that only covered one unit on the eyepiece graticle, it would um, be this long in terms of its length. If you want to convert that to micrometers, you can then simply multiply this by 1000 and that gives you the value in micrometers. Now let's try to do a real problem. If a cell measures 20 units on the IP scale, what is its actual size? Now remember we said that one unit of the IP graticle is this much in millimeters. So 20 units would simply be this, and I'm going to erase that 1000 over there. Um, 20 units would simply be that value over there times 20, right? Because this is the value for one. And whatever answer we get, um, we can then put in there. You can try to compute that problem and also convert it to micrometers just so you practice your conversions again, because this here is in millimeters. Okay. The next thing I want to show you is calculating magnification of an image. So sometimes you would be given an image that looks something like this one, and you would be told to calculate the magnification of this image. The first thing you must bear in mind is that magnification is equal to image size divided by actual size. I often tell students to write it out and not just write M is equal to I over A because I over over A might mean anything. So always write image size over actual size out in the formula when you're answering a question. 
First things first, you have to measure the length of this image. And of course, in the question, they would often tell you to measure from one particular point to the other. So if they label this section here, um, if you're following my pen over here, if they say that's um, X and they say we need you to measure up to Y, which is here, then it simply means you take your ruler and you measure from there to there, simply like that, obviously in a straight line and not in the abysmal line I've just drawn. Um, so you measure in that manner and once you measure the length of the image, you will get that value in millimeters. So you use the millimeters um, uh, version or section of your ruler. Then the next thing you have to do is you convert to micrometers. Obviously, they will tell you at the end of this image what the magnification is. So sometimes at the bottom of an image like this, you might see something that looks like this, where it simply writes times 500, or they would say 500 times, whichever way they write it. What 500 times is telling you is that the value of the magnification is equal to 500. So then you would get 500 as your magnification. You measure the length of this um, parts um, that, you, that have been identified. You convert them to micrometers. So let's just assume over here that we have, let's say, um, 100 micrometers after our conversion. And we then divide that by X uh, because we are trying to find the actual size. So always remember that over here, this is the image size. So we have X over there, which means that X would be equal to 100 divided by 500 and that's 1 over 5 and that is 0 0.2 so that means that our actual image would be or our actual size rather would be 0 0.2 micrometers so that's just an easy way to do this if you found it confusing don't be scared don't be worried just post the question in the comments and i will get back to you explaining it in words so that it is easy for you to follow the other thing you might be asked to do is to calculate magnification from a scale bar. Now, you might be given an image that looks like this and you say to yourself, OK, what do I do here? So you've been given a scale bar at the bottom of this image and you've also been given a number. Most of the time, the scale bar will come with a number. The first thing you have to do is take your ruler and measure the length of this scale bar. So basically from where it begins to where it ends. And you measure that in millimeters. Again, remember to convert to micrometers because as you can see here with the image um, that you have, or rather with the unit that you have under the scale bar, it is in micrometers. So when you measure this length over here, you have to make sure that it is also in micrometers. So this here, your actual size is actually the value of the scale bar. So that means this, when you say M is equal to I over A, when you say M is equal to I over A, that means that your actual size, which is A, is the value of the scale bar. We call this value at the bottom here the value of the scale bar. So that's going to be 76 micrometers. When you measure the length of this ruler, and I think when I did it with my students, um, we came to about 760 micrometers or 7,600 micrometers thereabout. But let's assume that that's the case. I'm not really sure if that was the value we got. But let's say this is 7,600 micrometers. You can see that the micrometers would cancel out, and this obviously then becomes 100. So that means magnification is equal to 100 times. Also bear in mind that if these units are not the same, you would not be able to cancel them out. So I advise students to write out the numbers with the units so that they themselves are able to see if the units cancel out and also remember to do the conversions that are necessary. 
The last thing, and I'm sure you're like, oh, thank goodness, because this is a lot. In biology, you do have a lot of fun math that happens, and they're totally enjoyable. So if you're not enjoying them now, don't stress too much about it. Again, if anything is confusing, post a question in the comments. I promise to get back to you as soon as possible, and I will share with you in very simple terms how to go about any problem you might be trying to solve. So calculating actual size from magnification is very simple. Again, you simply use the formula magnification is equal to image size over actual size and you've already been given the magnification in this question here. You've also been given the image size. But take note of this. It says if a plant cell image has a length of 50 millimeters, so you have to remember to convert it to micrometers and it has a magnification of 500 times. What is its actual size? By this time, you already know that this means it would be 50,000 divided by 500, and that would then give you 100 micrometers. So that is all that you need to know when it comes to measuring cells for microscopy. And I know it may be a bit daunting if you're new to biology, but I promise you that once you practice this very often, it becomes second nature and it just comes really easily to you. Also bear in mind to look out for the little tricks in the units when you're doing these calculations because sometimes those are the things that cause you to sleep up and help you or lead you to the wrong answer. Well, that's it for me for today. I will check in with you again with the third video on chapter one and that would be our last video. It's not going to be a very long video, but it would just introduce you to some of the organelles that you find in plants and animal cells. Unfortunately, most of it you would have to memorize just by reading, but as you start to grow in your understanding of biology, you will begin to understand why they work the way that they do. Until the next next video. Have a good time. Goodbye.